Okay, Francesco. Hello. So, hi, how are you? I am a bit tired, but yes. I'm excited to be here. Okay, so let's jump into questions. Uh, I told you before that I googled the wrong guy. Actually, yes. thinking it was you, but instead it was your friend. Actually, this is something interesting that you find another guy from Catania. Yeah. I don't know if I can say his name, maybe I will. Of course, of course yeah, you uh, can. You find pa Paolo Francesco Arretano, there is a, yes. a friend of me. I will show then the video to him. So he comes yeah. from Catania, your home city? Yeah, so Catania is my, my root town. Okay, yes. so Francesco, can you tell us more then about yourself? What do you do? What did you study if you did study? Yeah and maybe to even explain or describe how you got from Sicily all toward, all up to Bologna. Okay, yes, actually I moved to Bologna for studying uh, art. Mm -hmm. um, I started as a painter, but now I'm doing different kind of art. Um, I'm looking for different way of expression. Um, yeah, so. I lived in Bologna for uh, four years, more or less, and I started this travel from there, from okay. Bologna. Okay. So when did the journey begin? Uh, the 8th of March, of uh, May. The 8th of May. 8th of May. Okay, so almost two months on yes. the road. Have you ever traveled before, like these long distances? Uh, yes. Uh, I mean, this is the, 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 biggest, uh, the biggest one. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when I was 18, I, um, I did a bit of um, south of Spain, okay. Andalusia, mm -hmm. with a bike. Then I did uh, part of Italy with a bike and a lot of rounds in Sicily. Okay, nice. Yes. But uh, you also told me that you lived in Ecuador for some time? Uh, not really lived. Um, oh. Traveled, yes, okay. but not with a bike. bike? Okay. No, no, not with a bike. Actually, I sold my bike in, the, in Spain to buy the ticket to go to Ecuador. To Ecuador. And when but was that? When I was 18, so okay. just after high school, you know. But you did return back to the bike, so you use yes. it today to travel. Why? Why the bicycle? Actually, bicycle for me is the best way of traveling because there are a lot of mm, positive reasons. Uh, first, you are totally independent. Mm -hmm. You can move, you can bring things. I mean, I have, I think around 30 kilos of material. Um, That's... It, it's not that much. I mean, it depends where you go. I know some people who um, travel with the bike in the cold place mm -hmm. and they bring like 80 kilos of stuff. So, but I mean, just uh, when, when, with the bike, you can bring more than just on feet. Mm -hmm. um, but then, uh, you experience the landscape and the places where you go in a different way than just uh, going up a, a plane or, or a, a, a train. Mm -hmm. Being displaced in another place, you know, you, you miss all that part. Mm -hmm. um, in this way, you can just en en experience all the route and not, and not only the destination. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, it's not even important the destination. Mm -hmm. uh, during my day. It's important to find a good place where to sleep, mm -hmm. maybe close to some water, mm -hmm. maybe close to someone that invite me for dinner. Mm -hmm. um, but it's more important the, the, the journey, yes. Yes, but riding bicycle, it still has certain, let's say, disadvantages. What about when the weather is horrible? Ra when it's rainy, cold? Ah, okay. Okay, actually, I, I, I didn't experience until now the cold because I always um, traveled in summer or spring, so I, I don't have that kind of experience. But actually, when I started my travel, it was raining a lot. Mm -hmm. And I had kind of not really fun experience in uh, Slovenia because it was raining a lot and I stopped with my bicycle um, to some people's house. Uh, they just allowed me allow me to put the tent under a, um, you know, a roof. A shadow. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. But then, it, I mean, I was supposed to stay there just one night, but then it was raining a lot and they stopped there for two and a half days mm -hmm. and they were not really happy to have me there. Mm -hmm. This was the, the only moment where I felt a bit uh, not really welcome mm -hmm. from the people. Then all the other times, I, I'm, everyone 
is really nice to me. Uh, in that situation, yes, uh, I don't know, you could stay in the tent, but usually I prefer to, or, or to find um, um, a place to stay. No, a place like a uh, squatted house. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say, like destroyed house where you can just stay inside. I did this a couple times in North Italy and in Croatia. I found like an entire building that was empty. Yeah, well, it was not finished, and I had like a uh, an entire hotel just for me. And they put my tent in the highest floor with the um, the wooden uh, uh, roof mm -hmm. with the, all the view. So it was really nice. Um, yes. But it might be solution. dangerous as well. So uh, can you tell us more about how you plan your accommodation and food? Okay. I don't really plan the accommodation. I mean, okay. I have the tent, I have the sleeping bag, and I have an, a, a self-inflating mattress. Mm -hmm. something okay. And with this, I can sleep everywhere. Okay. Uh, then, yes, when, when I see that mm, the weather is not good, I try to find a roof, at least, like a, a roof where to put behind my, my tent. Uh, and for food, um, I, I always bring with me like nuts or kind of flour that you can cook without cook, you know, like hot flowers, for example, you just put water and you can eat it. Uh, I always have vegetables, fruits, then sometimes I stop and then buy some burek or whatever, you know, but um, usually. So how much uh, of the time you spend within the city and how much are you somewhere outside, on the outskirts, in nature? No, usually I don't stay in the city. I have no reason to stay in the city. I mean, if I have people who host me, like now, or, mm -hmm. or like in Zagreb, I was in Zagreb to some friends, mm -hmm. and they stayed there like 20 days. Mm -hmm. And because there I, I develop a lot of um, project, um, a lot of my art projects. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a good reason to stay there for so long time. But usually I don't really enjoy a lot of the city because when you travel like I am traveling, it's harder because it's harder to find a place where to put the tent. Okay, okay. Or you, you pay a place. Or if you want to live more wild, you don't have water. You don't have the place for the tent. You, you don't have the place for, for the bathroom. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have the like you know fruits around to pick from the trees. Uh, okay, but do uh, you miss then meeting people? Sometimes uh, in in the night, mm -hmm. like in the evening, when when the suns go down and they am already with the tent like uh, open and I'm just there like this, and I look the sun. In in that situation, in those situations, sometimes I feel a bit alone. Yes. Mm. I mean, these are the only moments where I, I like to be with someone. I would like to be with someone, and actually, oftentimes it happens that um, I just ask to some people um, to, to my road, to my way, if I can put my tent in their garden, mm. and that's the best option because I feel safe. Mm. And of course, they invite me for dinner. We share. We can communicate. communicate. Yeah. Even and the the. Mm, Something, something, something interesting for me mm -hmm. is how uh, I can communicate um, even with people who doesn't speak English mm -hmm. in this situation. Um, how to feel the human contact even mm -hmm. if there is not a common language. And in what ways? You mean you use your hands, your body? Yeah, well, sometimes you just don't communicate so much. Mm -hmm. You just maybe. It comes the the drunk guy. He just says some random things in Bo in Bosnia or Croatia. I don't understand him, but I understand that he's saying something to make me feel home, mm -hmm. and I feel that you know. Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes it's not a real a real communication made of words, mm -hmm. but you you understand the intentions. Mm -hmm. And when the feeling, this yeah, yeah when this happens, you feel home. I feel home, and it's fine the same. Mm -hmm. Even if at the end of the day maybe mm, we didn't really pass information to One each another, other, yeah. yes, but you pass um, a feeling, you know. Mm -hmm. For example, before um, before get to Zagreb, 
I stopped in Strasa. There is, I don't know even if I can tell, if I can say, if I can call him a, a village because it's like four house with uh, six people living. And, but there I felt so home, really, because like, no one sp uh, um, speak English. Maybe uh, that's because they needed you as much as you needed someone to yeah, talk to, because you were new and... They were so happy to have yeah. me there, for sure. I mean, I just put the tent and they arrived with a tractor. They were like, like I don't know, like, no, there were three people in front and other two behind with two, kids, with two children. And they just went like to the, um, to the forest to take, just to, to take um, a motorbike that they left there, I don't know why. But just, they just took me in this tractor and, and it was kind of crazy. Um, the whole ceremony. Yeah, it was a ceremony. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so. But have you ever had dangerous encounters? No, never. In nature, neither? No. Mm. Not really, no, no, no. I, I, I felt a bit uncomf uncomfortable some nights ago. I was with some guys that it look, mm, they look funny at first, but then they started taking a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol, and at the end they were a bit annoying, not really so funny, but they didn't do nothing. They were just a bit like too much screaming. Mm -hmm. They screamed to me in Bosnia, but not in a really funny way. I mean, probably they wanted to be funny at me, mm -hmm. But I, I felt a bit uncomfortable and I just went to bed. Okay, too much. Yeah, it was a bit too much. But they started with cocaine, uh, spin, okay. everything. Full stop there. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell me more about this journey in particular? So you started it in Bologna, Bologna. and the final destination is Catania. Actually, yes. I'm, so just said, I'm just going home. I just want home. to say this was interesting to me. You said, yeah, you were going home. I'm, go I'm going home. Yeah, the... the, the um, the, um, the route? No. The, the, the theme mm -hmm. of home, for me, it's, it's a lot present in, uh, also in, in the picture that I'm taking. Mm -hmm. And also, in, in, it can be a bit maybe sad, but uh, for, um, it's kind of interesting to me to see how people um, build their home here and also the aspect of the destroyed home from the war and also from the um, time, you know, like, like just how the image of house, of feeling home, mm -hmm. can always change. Um, so, but yeah, at the end of the day, I'm just going back home, just taking a longer route. And how many kilometers? You know, that I didn't count them. Mm -hmm. I, I think it will be 2000 and something, but I don't know, I will tell you at the end. Okay, and when will you come home? I think, uh, I imagine around August 23, the, more or less. Nice. And August is, 20, you know, like this. Mm. Yeah. Is this your first time in Bosnia and Herzegovina? Yes, yes. And what in all you, Balkans, is my first time. Balkans, my okay, first in time. general. And yes. what do you think? I, I mean, uh, right now, I saw only uh, Croatia and, and Bosnia, mm -hmm. and a little bit of Slovenia, mm -hmm. just the, the piece of to cross it. You know. um, actually, I really like Bosnia, really. I think it, it is a special country. Why? First, okay, okay. Uh, what I, re I really like is that there is clean water everywhere. And this is not something common anymore in the Western world. And not even in the... I mean, it's not any more common to have Around clean, world, clean yeah. uh, river. And actually, I don't know if it's... I don't know if it is true, but um, someone told me that this was possible because during the war they destroyed all the industry so now there are not anymore so much industry so mm -hmm. the water is cleaner i don't know if this is true at this least one good thing coming out of yeah, the this, this this was well, interesting has... for me i mean how how at the end i mean it's not war is not something good but mm -hmm. how under this aspect now this is something that is it's um, something rich for for Bosnia. Mm. It's uh, really, it's not common to have clean water like here. I, I don't know in, in North Europe, maybe, but in Italy, no. Like all the rivers in Italy, the main river, the, the Po rivers, it's a shit, totally. And here, the main river, the Una river, it's a treasure, really, it's uh, special. 
and I spent some some nights in the um, Linea Springs, mm -hmm. and I was just there, you know, drinking water from the river and enjoying the nature. I mean, under the nature aspect, Bosnia is special, and also the people that I'm meeting uh, are nice people, yeah, everyone. Okay. And um, can you tell me how it is to travel in the midst of COVID-19 and all of this? I mean, I am happy that here no one is, no one cares a lot about COVID. And this, I, I think this is more, um, okay, there are many reasons, but I think there is a reason of how a, the government choose to manage it. Mm -hmm. Because in Italy, we made it a, a big deal, so big deal. Like in Italy, everyone is just think to COVID, 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 COVID. Because I, I, you went through a lot. This is true because I mean I, I think there are a lot of reasons. Italy probably is more there is more pollution, so people get more sick. Probably there are there is more old people. people yeah. They die more. There is just more people because I mean Bosnia is kind yes. of the desert. I mean when I when I go with my bike, I can I can pass like sixty kilometers without meeting almost no one. You know, mm -hmm. uh, this is not possible in Italy. Mm -hmm. So it's just different um, situation, but I also think there is just different how the government take it and manage it. Anything they hear, it was probably just more relaxed. Mm -hmm. um, really, um, I think that the, one of the problem of the COVID is that it makes us making m uh, more problems than what really we should, I don't know. Uh, I mean, be, before starting this, this trip, I also was a bit like, ah, but with the COVID, maybe I cannot move and this and this. But then when you start traveling, you see that actually you can do more things than what you think. And I think that a lot of people is stopping themselves for the COVID, but mm, I would suggest them to just go okay. and do their But stuff. you do have to take tests yes. when crossing yes. the borders. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and actually, I'm also making the video of all the COVID tests that I do in the border. Okay, so are those videos going to be in your movie that you mentioned? Yes, uh, I have to figure out still how this movie will be. I have some ideas, I have some uh, way to follow, mm. but I, I don't have all the movie done in my mind. Okay. I would see. And the last question, of course, is why traveling? What did you or because are you it's, it's gaining the, from it? It's the best thing that I can do now. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think there is the best thing for everyone. Everyone finds themselves in a different way. For me, it's, mm, actually, I, I'm trying to, to find the way to connect art and travel together. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I'm traveling, it's the, the best moment where, where I'm, where to, the best moment to feel free. Mm -hmm. Is the best moment of, of freedom that I find in my life, and okay. it's good for my act. Mm -hmm. Okay, Francesco, thank, thank you very you. much. Grazie. Yes, eh, voila. Ne manageremo.